Well, good evening or uh, good morning for those of you who are coming from India where it's 4.30 in the morning. Uh, good afternoon uh, for those of you who are coming from the West Coast. Welcome to EdChat Interactive. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm going to quickly share my screen for, for a couple minutes. And um, let me just go to, uh, oops, darn, I always do that. I hit share it's when I'm thinking of sharing my screen and then when I get, get present here. And today we're going to be talking about app smashing. Uh, we're going to be uh, using Flipgrid and 3D Bear. We have three really exciting educators who are going to be uh, sharing their experiences. We have uh, Denise Wright from uh, South Carolina. We have Ann Cosmo, who's actually coming through Flipgrid. And we have Michael Drezik, who's coming from Buffalo, New York. And um, we're actually being sponsored by the Serious Play Conference, which is a phenomenal conference. It'll be virtual this year uh, where um, they go through ways th that both children and adults can either learn or change their behavior through play. Um, and so check it out if, if, if you can. Um, I, I want to just say from my standpoint, big picture, what you should be looking at is that what, what we're all going to be talking about is we want to give children gives kids challenges that meant one that make them really want to work hard and accomplish things. And then what you're going to be doing in terms of the app smashing is you're going to be organizing those challenges through Flipgrid. Flipgrid's where you're going to be posting the challenge to the kids. It's where the kids are going to be posting their creations and it's where the kids are going to be sharing and challenging each other. And then um, tonight we're going to be using 3D Bear as the tool to really unleash the, the kids' creativity. That's where they're visualizing their thinking using augmented reality. Then they're gonna be creating photos and they're gonna be creating videos of what they're creating. And then they're gonna be showcasing their accomplish, accomplishments with video presentations using 3D Bear. And there's an example of this on the right. We're heading towards February, which is when the Mars uh, mission to Mars takes place. And we have the, uh, the landing, um, the, the uh, rover device on Mars with the first time we're going to fly a helicopter on Mars and guess who's waiting on Mars for them to land. There's Bernie. So um, this was actually done in 3D Bear. Um, and just one more thing that I want to go through tonight. Obviously, it's app smashing with 3D Bear, but we do have some some other sessions that are coming up in the next uh, over the course of the next uh, month. There's um, a, Celeste, uh, a section, uh, session being conducted by Shalini Chauhan and Sumedha Sodi on unleashing student motivation and creativity with Buncee. There's a session on entrepreneurship with uh, th uh, three educators from India, Anupam Sharma, Dr. Vijay Chandra Sikaran, and Manik Kavel Methusame, who's actually in, in Canada right now. Uh, that's coming up on February 19th. And then um, on February 27th, we have Deepti Chopra, who's going to be talking about showcasing student artwork using Art Steps. And then on March 4th is another serious play speaker, um, George DeBakey, who's going to be talking about uh, talking to independent developers on if you're creating games, how do you expand to, for them to be able to be used overseas as well? So those are four sessions that are coming up and we're constantly adding them. If you like tonight's session, feel free to sign up for another session with us. And if you have something that you'd like to talk about, you know, you can feel free to uh, contact me or contact us. And we're always looking for people who are doing great things in education and to help them showcase their talents. So tonight, our first speaker is going to be Denise Wright. Denise is a, um, uh, I guess each person can really introduce themselves, but, but Denise uh, is a 3D Bear ambassador. I believe you're a Flipgrid ambassador also. Um, and she is a NASA ambassador. Um, and she's been to some great events with NASA and has done some really cool work um, regarding uh, working with NASA and her kids. So uh, Denise, I'll let you know, you go first. I'm going to go into the background and I'm just going to sit here and make fun of you. No, go ahead. I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'm going to mute myself. 
Well, thank you for having me, Mitch, tonight. I'm so excited to be here with um, Mike as well as Anne, some um, great other educators and speakers tonight to share everything that we're doing with these resources. And again, you know, app smashing is just the idea of taking some great educational tools, putting them together to form a great product for student learning, okay? So we're gonna highlight Flipgrid and 3D Bear tonight. I'll show you one of a couple of examples. Um, you know, I don't have all my students here tonight, obviously showing them on the grid because of privacy, because I wanna make sure that they're okay. So I did check with these students a couple of their examples, but they were okay with me sharing their examples this evening. But again, um, I'm a STEAM and online educator. Uh, I This is my many year of teaching. Uh, I was a full-time edu uh, online educator actually for seven years, but back in 2017 came back to the classroom um, full-time. But with COVID, um, I was asked this year to use my online teaching skill set again. Um, I wasn't expecting that, but you know, that's, that's okay. That's what, you know, we bring all our skills. So that's important. Uh, I volunteer for NASA as a solar system ambassador. Uh, every September, NASA takes uh, volunteers. And basically what we do is we talk about NASA and our, our communities and all the great things that are going on and help educate uh, others, especially from adults, all, all the way, children all the way through adults about everything happening with NASA. Um, I also write for National Science Teaching Association. Right now this year, I'm a guest columnist, online teacher. And recently I'm very honored. I've been uh, appointed to the Inter IAU International um, Astronomical Union's National Astronomy Education Coordinator Board. There's five of us nationally. Um, Earth and space science is really being integrated uh, into nine through 12 education now at high school, all the way K to five, well, K through 12 actually. And um, we need some more em emphasis on that. So that's what I'll be doing. Also Astro STEM, I'm a, I do a, a group for kids. Um, I also lead a group here for adults called Grand Strand Astronomers. I founded that. I'm a member of ISTE. So yeah, so uh, I love being a part of the educational community and sharing with everybody. So anyway, um, I'm going to talk about some great ideas this evening um, about app smashing, Flipgrid, and 3D Bear. Um, one really big project that I want to feature this evening is actually a citizen science project. Uh, citizen science projects are projects where we're getting students to and adults actually it could be any age participating in real world science um there are scientists out there that need lots of data to collect for their science experiments and there's you know there's only so many scientists so they go to kids they go to adults they go to all of us to help them with their projects so one that I'm actually did this year because I'm remote was called Tomato Sphere. You're like Tomato Sphere, what's that? Well, you know, it's a project that I'm going to share with you this evening, and it has worked really well in this environment since I'm completely virtual. But it can also work if you're hybrid. It could also work for you if you are face to face. Um, and you can find plenty of these citizen science projects on what's called ScienceStarter.org, and Mitchell shared these slides with you in case you want to check that out. Um, and so anyway, you'll see, I'm going to show you tonight how I, how we app smashed our Flipgrid and also our uh, 3D Bear um, with you, talking about the Citizen Science Project. Um, another idea is um, if you go out there and look on the web, uh, you can actually find out when the International Space Station is flying overhead in your community and sort of challenge your students to go out there and film it flying overhead, make it a family activity. Um, and um, also get the 3D bear, maybe ISS or satellite to go across and put them all on the grid. Which is another exciting idea. Um, Jupiter and Saturn, this uh, about a month ago, back in December, we actually had a conjunction where the planets, when we looked at them from Earth, were really close together. So another way of getting people outside and then posting that in a big community. So um, um, another thing is virtual science fairs. Um, students describing scientific concepts and it could be used to flip grid and 3D bear on, on the grid. Um, also, there's a Mars landing challenge that I'm gonna to talk to you about a little bit this evening. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that as well. But anyway, uh, why don't we app smash? Um, we're gonna show students how to use tech in an innovative way, provides a platform for students to share their work, their research and their knowledge. So um, this is the project that um, you're gonna see Flipgrid and 3D Bear integrated in. It was called the Tomato Sphere Project. 
Um, I actually have, if you can see them, I think my background's sort of in the way, <laughs> but I actually have some of my tomato plants here. Um, so what, and all of you this evening, any one of our attendees will, in the United States, I know, and Canada, um, can apply for this project. Um, so back at the beginning of the school year, I um, applied to be part of the Tomato Square Project. It's through the First Seed Foundation, where they mail us two packs of seeds, Group P and Group N. So I had about 20 packs of P seeds and 20 packs of N seeds. And one set of those seeds was on the International Space Station, but we didn't know which one. So the students and I had to plan an investigation with the tomato seeds, trying to determine which group of seeds you know, were there. So obviously we had to make a hypothesis in the beginning and make some educated guesses. Um, we talked about the idea of what do we expect? You know, the, will the tomatoes grow, the ones that were in space, will they grow sideways? Will the tomatoes not grow at all because they were in space? And maybe, maybe they'll grow more or maybe they won't you know, grow at all. So these are all kinds of things that we were talking about, okay? So um, we have this student here, um, she's making. Hi, my name is Olivia and I work in the Tomato Sphere Project. I grew tomatoes from group P and N and I believe that N is on the space station. <laughs> Okay, so you can see she's an augmented reality using 3D Bear. She's got the tomato there in her hand. And we've made our hypotheses and they're all over the grid. So you can see um, students making their educated guesses. Now, I did have students volunteer as space farmers. Okay, so what I did, because I'm completely remote, I got their addresses, I put the seeds inside an envelope and mailed the seeds to their house. There were certain students that said, hey, Miss Wright, I'm not a green thumb. I'm not good at doing this, um, but I'll, you know, give, I'll respond to Olivia or, you know, I'll share and I'll be there and I'll give you what, what my ideas are. So I had kids that volunteered that were literally growing them at home. And then I had, I had other kids that just, you know, just tuned in and gave their point of view. So, you know, students can respond to one another on the grid. They can make their hypothesis. And you can see she did a great job doing that. And we're, we integrated both of those tools. Okay, um, so uh, here is another student. This is pretty far in the project. Um, if you notice in the background, when I go to play this video, she actually transplanted all her tomato plants already. Um, this was pretty far along. Um, and this is towards the end of the project. She's talking about her data, but you could see those massive tomato plants behind her. Okay, and her and her mom said, um, we couldn't take it anymore. We had to transplant. So you can see two rows of tomato plants. She's got the N on the top row and she's got the P underneath. And she's counting the number of plants have germinated because we're trying to figure out does space, those seeds being in space, does that have an impact on their growth? Now, if you are a K-5 educator, you can definitely do this project. If you're a high school educator, you can even vary this project and put the plants in different types of soil, like sandy soil, clay loam soil, pH. So you can really span this project K to through 12. And again, you can do it at home, mail the seeds out to your kids. You can do it in a hybrid program where, where maybe you're growing them at school or they're growing them at home. You can also do it face to face, okay? So you can see how we're app smashing there, those two. And look at how much more innovative and how much more profound that is when you've got it, the, it being on the grid and the student actually holding, <laughs> holding the tomato in her hand, okay? So anyway, um, you know, we kept, I kept showing the tomato seeds. We kept posting on the grid throughout the project, sharing our data. So hopefully you get the idea of how you can use these two um, great tools together. And then eventually back in January, I shared our, our data with NASA and we got it, our information back. And we had, um, a, we had 100 plants uh, and we had 92 out of 100 actually sprouted in the P group and 56 out of 100 sprouted in the, and um, actually 56 out of 100 in the P group and 92 out of 100 in the N group. So right away, the kids said, okay, I think that they got this correct. Their hypothesis was correct. They said, hey, we think that the space, space travel is gonna have um, a, a negative impact on the plants unless they're gonna sprout. 
which they were correct. So they did a really great job and you're able to get the results back. So this is just a great science experiment, lots of fun, really showing students the impact of the scientific method. We talked about keeping all those factors the same, the same amount of sunlight, the same amount of water, the same amount of you know, environment, and just that one factor. So it was great. And Flipgrid and 3D Bear really lends itself to that. Were, um, the, were the kids able to come up with any of the reasons why the ones in space didn't germinate as well? Um, you know, we talked a little bit about that. You mentioned that in detail. And a big thing that they said was, well, don't we have the atmosphere protecting us here on Earth? And in space, they're in the International Space Station and the seas are up there. And we don't have an atmosphere and we don't have those same gases, maybe the same atmospheric makeup. So that's something that they guessed about. They also, we also talked a little bit about um, solar radiation as well. Um, because it's more shielded a little bit more through the atmosphere versus, you know, you've got that solar radiation impacting the International Space Station directly. Um, a lot of times we've got to move that space station to the other side or behind the Earth if we know a solar flare is going to be sent out because we don't want to expose those astronauts directly to that radiation because we've got the atmosphere that protects us. So, um, you know, those are some great things we talked about. I mean, obviously, I'm just giving you a really quick background about the project itself. Um, again, if you want to do the project with your students, you're like, hey, this is something really cool. You can do this too. Um, they are taking um, names right now in schools and signups. You'll get your seeds in March. And then for the spring part of the year, you'll do this actual same project that I did and, you know, be able to have tomatoes this summer um, growing away. So um, it, it's just been lots of fun and it's a great way to get them off the computer and sort of like doing a hands-on project, a whole family involved, um, brothers and sisters and parents involved at home and, you know, sharing your information on the grid, sharing the augmented reality app factor as well. Okay. So just well, there's one more question. I love this question from um, Judy Nagoyan, which is, okay. do, the, do they taste differently? Um, well, we haven't had any sprout yet. Ah, so, okay. you know, uh, I, I actually teased the kids, though. Um, I put a bunch of tomatoes, <laughs> augmented <laughs> tomatoes on um, the, the plants. And then over Christmas, I came back and I said, Santa Claus brought some augmented, uh, brought some fertilizer, and oh my God, look what happened! My tomato, and they're looking at me like strange, like, wait a minute, like, <laughs> but, oops, sorry, I just, I'm, um, I by accident, uh, I went to let somebody in, and I muted you by accident, Denise. Oh, that's Peter. okay, that's okay, but sorry. Um, can I keep going? I mean, yes, go ahead. So, I'm so sorry. Like 19 after, and I want to make sure that I'm giving Ann and Michael enough time to talk. So I, I have something to talk really fast with the Mars challenge. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it really fast. Um, but this is actually a student chat. We're getting ready to actually have Mars Perseverance land on um, Mars on February the 18th coming up, which is really exciting. And um, why not use Flipgrid and 3, 3D Bear to share all of that excitement in your um, in your classrooms, okay? So um, they have a Mars, NASA has a Mars toolkit out right now. Um, and she talks a little bit about the challenges. You know, you can see her with cotton and, and uh, balloons and all kinds of products in front of her and actually designing a challenge where, where kids would actually design a um, something to land on Mars and, you know, have a rover, sort of a landing, a landing party kind of thing. So NASA has a lot of great resources out for that. And then um, actually I'm going to stop that and just advance so that I could give, you, give the other guys enough time to present. I don't want to take up all the time. Um, and this is a good example. I, I was doing this. I haven't done this yet, but this is a good example. This is a great way to celebrate the landing of Mars. We have a 3D uh, rover model, which is actually 3D printed and downloaded at STL file and import it into uh, our scenery right now. So students can have a, a lots of fun of using 3D Bear and Flipgrid to create um, scenes to get ready for the landing of the rover. Also, I could pull this out front, which is actually, this is the actual um, Mars Lunar Lander. So the um, actual rover will be inside a compartment like this and the students could actually add Mars to the background, pretend like the orbiter is going through space and going through the planet Mars and landing on the planet itself. 
I also have a picture of what this is called the, uh, the sky crane, and that will actually help. Um, the sky crane will help uh, the, the, uh, the rover. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, another great way, you have to be able to share that with your community and you know your students. And um, that's another great way to, to do something like that. And the, um, the student challenge is there. Um, my wakelet of my tomatoes for project is on there and I definitely want to give them enough time to talk as well. And then last but not least, um, this project, the tomato sphere project, we actually shared it with our local newspaper as well. So that was really exciting. So not only were we sharing with the grid and sharing with each other and our parents, we actually shared the whole project with our local community and um, definitely use Flipgrid to celebrate this upcoming launch and you know landing of and, and, and 3D Bear for perseverance. Um, use these great tools that will help you um, Help, help students explain the launch and what's happening and you know sharing all this excitement with the community and you know the positive in education so thank you so much for having me and I'm, I, do, I don't want to take up all the time because I'm talking very quickly and I want to make sure it's enough time for other speakers as well. I, I know you're talking <laughs> almost as quickly as a New Yorker that's pretty good. <laughs> Pennsylvania original so yeah. <laughs> Oh, and I'm giving it to you. So thank you for having me here with these great educators. And I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> All right. And I believe if I have this set up that I should be good to go. Can somebody give me a thumbs up? You can see my slides, right? Perfect. Well, friends, thank you so much. I just want to say thanks to Mitch for inviting me to join in and Denise and Michael. I mean, I am fangirling over getting to join in a webinar with you. You're both educators I look up to, but I love having this opportunity to share what I'm passionate about, which is student voice and the brilliant combination of 3D bare augmented reality combined with Flipgrid is just this beautiful way to bring learning to life and and mitch referenced wanting our students to work hard and you'll learn a little bit about me i love to push all the buttons and play to learn but friends thank you so much for joining in from all over the world tonight my name is ann cosma and i'm one of the educator innovation leads on team flipgrid i love to say that means i'm a teacher helping teachers so we're going to go a little bit back in time, right, to my classroom, and this was approximately 2012. I taught first grade for a long, long time, and I told my students, hey, we're going to have fun learning. I want learning to come alive in creative ways, and this example simply shows a math problem. But I would teach my students a strategy, and then I would say to them, prove it. Prove to me your understanding. And back in the day, there was this augmented reality app called Erasma. And I remember learning about it and it changed the, I mean, everything for me because what I would say to my students is prove it. They would prove it. And I said, when you're ready, I'll record you explaining how you solved that. And then we used Erasma to bring student voice to life in new and creative ways. So this was my first experience with augmented reality. And I told you, I love the idea of playing to learn, of pushing all the buttons. And I wanted my first grade scholars to know that even though they're young, ages five and six, and maybe up into seven, they still had the creative pathways to share their authentic voice. And that's what was my why in the classroom, authentic voice for an authentic audience. So the brilliant idea of app smashing and using more than one app to create, to enhance, to bring learning and sharing that learning alive in new ways is just absolutely inspiring to me. So let's fast forward a little bit to 2019, okay? In 2019, Flipgrid put on an event called App Smash Madness. And you see that little hand pointing to the 3D Bear app from back in the day. And I, didn't know about 3D Bear before this. And I was watching these videos and I heard an educator named Priscilla Heredia share this epic app smash idea from 3D Bear and Flipgrid, how she thought digital storytelling and augmented and I, reality. And I think she's here. I think she is too. I saw a tweet from her. So, um, 
I am having a fangirl moment and shouting out to one of those, one of the most passionate, inspiring, dedicated, creative, innovative, outside the box thinking educators that I know, Priscilla. And I asked her and I asked all the educators that I'm sharing ideas from tonight for permission. I'm so glad she said yes. But this, this was the start of a journey that she took an idea from the way she was teaching and thought, hey, I can empower my students to share in these new creative ways, right? So what she did was take the, the concept of using that augmented overlay, and it could be simple as add end plus add end equals sum to create a math story for your youngest scholars, creating virtual arrays to understand mathematical concepts. I love right here using the bear and dancing to be an inspiration for creative writing. And then she came up with this idea of flip ventures, right? So she put these 3D bear videos into Flipgrid and gave the students a prompt. If this, then that. And these are ideas that can be transformed in countless ways. And I'm a visual learner, so I wanted to share this. If you can think it, you can do it. So don't be afraid to push buttons and don't be afraid to play to learn if you're new to 3D Bear, if you're new to Flipgrid, because the possibilities for leveling up teaching and learning are endless, right? Endless app smash possibilities. So here are some good ideas from the community that I want to share. And I reached out to Anupam and Mitch, I believe you said she's gonna be on a, a webinar coming up soon. Yep. And I saw this friends and it blew my mind that she was using 3D Bear to empower folks to talk about the sustainable development goals. And look at those examples using the fun augmented overlays in their real world environment, but extending that to make that personal connection. So I love that the quote is, it's empowering students to be creative and innovative, right? Look at those pictures. That is one pathway. No matter what your learning modalities are, no matter how your scholars learn, letting them create. Giving them the opportunity transforms everything. Engagement, motivation, ownership of learning, retention of information. And I used to tell my first graders, you're learning and you're having fun. That's what I wanted school to be learning coming alive for my young scholars. So Katie Gardner, one of my dear friends, who's also a primary educator, she is using 3D Bear to support her students, English learners, language acquisition, using the creative possibilities of moving the augmented overlays in their natural environment. So practicing language skills. And I taught in a school community that was 87% English learners. So this speaks right to my heart. Whether you're comparing and contrasting, whether you're using a prepositional phrase or giving students the opportunity to practice oral language fluency, let them make something and let them have fun doing it because it's going to transform everything. Now, are you ready for a few more ideas, friends? Let's go. So when we think about combining 3D Bear and Flipgrid, these app smash possibilities, it can be as simple as creating. And as Mitch mentioned in the start, you can house all of this in Flipgrid. So for those of you who might be new to Flipgrid, I'm so excited to, to get to share a little bit when you invite your students to participate, remember you are the one who always remains in control of the environment. Your students do not create Flipgrid accounts, you as the educator do, and you invite them to add their response. So that's that big universally recognized red record symbol. And one of the options within the Flipgrid camera is to use upload clip. So I did that this morning and I'm going to show you a few examples, but that's just uploading any video clip from your device or camera roll. 
Another option within the Flipgrid camera is to choose those effects and say they take a screenshot or capture a image within 3D Bear when they've designed that overlay. All they have to do is upload that photo within the Flipgrid environment. And again, these get submitted to you as an educator. And here's an example that I made, Shape Hunt at Home. Former first grade teacher, I immediately default to what could my five and six year old students do? They can look for geometric shapes inside their environment and use academic language to describe something, right? That would be the goal. So this is just an example of how you could set up a Flipgrid topic and here are some fun play to learn experiences I had this morning using the 3D shapes with it within Flipgrid Bear. So there's a cool lamp in the corner that actually has spheres. The plant is in a cylinder container. And then of course I had to get out that epic ice cream cylinder from the freezer and combine a cone and a half sphere and talk about the magic of a sweet treat while you're learning, right? Friends, there are so many possibilities. And here's my true confession, right? I'm gonna read this like hand, hand up. I am not an expert with using 3D Bear, but I love, love, love seeing what educators around the world are doing. And as a visual learner and a connected educator on social and Twitter, I get ideas from passionate, inspiring educators like you around the world. And then I think, well, how can I use them to give my students the opportunities to share, celebrate, and showcase their learning? So I mentioned my why, it's all about authentic voice for an authentic audience. So when you think about 3D Bear and Flipgrid and App Smash possibilities, just remember, this is one way for you to have your students demonstrate independence, build content knowledge, vary their learning showcase for audience, task, and purpose, comprehend and critique, provide evidence for their learning artifacts, use technology with purpose, learn and gain new perspective, level up communication, problem solving, realization, reasoning, visualization, creativity, and all the things. And you know, I was a California educator for a long, long time. So that's a combination not only of um, California state standards, but the mathematical thinking practices too. So friends, I know my time is almost up and I want to give Michael the opportunity to have his full time, but I just want to encourage you to push buttons and have fun and play to learn and remember all of us are here to help. So my name's Ann Cosma and you can reach me on social at Ann Cosma 723 and at flipgrid.com or definitely feel free to check out help.flipgrid.com and please 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 know we are all better together and i love hearing your ideas and celebrating your ideas and just again want to say thank you to mitch so and, be, to be, and before you get off there was yeah. an interesting question which i'm going to change a little bit but it was from okay. ronell and she was asking if students could could uh share their outputs from kai's clan also on Flipgrid. And so my guess is that Flipgrid is just a phenomenal tool for any time that there's student output. Like, first of all, if you have a prompt that you want students to follow, and anytime there's student output, the Flipgrid is, is a great way of pulling together those projects, right? Absolutely. This could be as simple as a selfie style video introduction with a name pronunciation, any artifact of learning that they've created within any tool or app on their device. They could save it to their camera roll and upload it or use any of the creative camera effects. There's a bo there are boards, inking tools, emojis, screen recorder, a mic only capability as well for, for podcasting, if you will tons of creative possibilities for how students can demonstrate their thinking, their understanding, but also showcase it. So in any core content area, any community of learning, absolutely. Great. Thank you. And thank you. That was a great presentation. Thank you. And now batting cleanup, Michael Dresden. Thanks so much. Yeah, that was, uh, those are tough to follow right there, but um, I'm going to go ahead and share. Hopefully everybody can see that. Uh, maybe a thumbs up if you can get in there. 
Good to go. It's loading, friend. There it is. All right. All right. So um, just a quick introduction. Um, my name is Michael Dresick. I am the District Tech Integrator at Lakeshore CSD. And I'm um, also a Splitgrid Student Voice Ambassador and a 3D Bear Ambassador. Um, passionate about making, about student voice um, and digital citizenship, as well as global collaboration. And I think you'll see some of that come through here. But if you head over to the uh, 3D Bear website, I'm going to start with the why. And um, this is kind of the why for me for 3D Bear is that creative educators need creative tools to bring content to life. And 3D Bear helps with that. And um, it does it through AR and augmented reality. And um, I love that, you know, the world becomes your canvas and it's simple, it's easy and it's engaging. It, and for students doing it for the first time, it has that novelty factor. And we know the brain loves novelty. And we've already seen then the ways that you can then amplify and take that further. So it becomes more than just novelty and it becomes meaningful and authentic like um, Denise and Anne had shared. And um, empowering them as creators and storytellers. So why Flipgrid? I just slapped a whole bunch of student voices magic stickers on here because we realized that um, student voice is magical, and I know that everyone on this webinar right now, um, you know, has experienced student voice um, and the power and the way that it can change you as an educator. So why 3D Bear and Flipgrid? For me, merging the two together is um, really tapping into that ISTE student standard of creative communicator. Um, you know, you get the creativity um, of both tech tools, but a place uh, for students to share their learning um, to respond, to engage with their classmates, um, to create something new, all right? When we talk about, look at the definition of innovative, you're creating something new, essentially from nothing, but you're tapping into these amazing technologies. So um, it's, it's a fantastic medium. So, you know, I look at this as launching an out of device experience, right? We, we do our creating on the device, but then it extends it further and um, it, it puts it in the environment that you are. I mean, that's what's kind of just to me is just so cool and, and fun about augmented reality. Um, so then, you know, what do you do with it? Um, right, it's, it's, it's cute that I can put the I love 3D bear um, on there, but let's, you know, go beyond that and taking it into the classroom. So I just wanted to talk about if you're new to any of these tools, the buttons that you need to push, right? And said, push all the buttons. And uh, in this case, you got to know how to push the right buttons so that it has the right outcome for you. And for me in Flipgrid, it's, it's those three dots and it's the upload clip because I can take any 3D bear creation and export that as a video or save it to my device camera roll and then bring that into Flipgrid. Now, when I record a video in 3D bear, it lets me record for one minute. Um, students probably have more to say. And now your shy students might go for much less than a minute, but there's this magical add more button on Flipgrid. So if you set your Flipgrid topic to accept up to 10 minutes of video, then you can have essentially 10 different 3D Bear videos merged into one Flipgrid video. Um, on 3D Bear, the magic buttons that you need to push is you'll see that circle button right at the bottom center of your screen. And, you, and in order to get video, you've got to press it and hold it. Um, I know I've made the mistake of just pressing it once and it snaps a photo, but I want to be able to press that, hold it, and then record my voice and then really have that storytelling piece. Um, you also have that share button down below where you can always go back to any of your creations. And as a G Suite district, I love the add to drive option that, that you have there as well. So, um, you know, I just uh, did something here that I thought was kind of fun earlier is I used the text feature in 3D Bear and um, I did the hashtag Flipgrid for all. You can search it on Twitter. You'll get inspired by a lot of great Flipgrid ideas using that hashtag. Um, but then you could also essentially create a Flipgrid AR code and then scan that and have your 3D Bear AR pop out of the screen. So you could essentially go either way with that. You could have some 3D Bear AR standalone, or you could even bring your 3D Bear video to life with Flipgrid AR. So there's a lot of augmented reality capabilities there with that QR code. So I just want to talk about a few lesson ideas. I worked with a high school uh, math teacher at Lakeshore and I was a math teacher for 10 years before doing tech integration. So that's kind of where my heart is. But, um, you know, the question I got from students all the time was, when are we ever going to use this? And, uh, you know, I say, well, let me show you or, you know, there, there's tons of applications. Math is everywhere. So now I love the, the shape sort, um, even at the high school level. Um, what they have to do here is bring in any of the geometry shapes and essentially classify them by related properties. So can they do that? And then can they record that story? And then they can bring it into Flipgrid and extend the conversation. 
So I know in the beginning, um, Mitch shared that you could create the challenge on Flipgrid and then build that out in 3D Bear. A lot of the things that I do sometimes create in 3D Bear and bring the conversation into Flipgrid. So you really could go in either direction with that based on um, how you want to approach that as a teacher. Um, another thing that you know I like is math is everywhere, right? So what if uh, we use 3D Bear object to find math in the real world to visually represent what we're discovering? You know, I want to show my students um, parallel lines or perpendicular lines, or I'm talking about slope intercept. I can use some of these 3D Bear objects to kind of highlight them, to capture them, to visually represent them. And then um, I could actually have a student really just make a short little video, put that into Flipgrid, and then have them re reply with either another video that they make in 3D Bear with what they discovered that's related to it. So we're seeing that there's similar math properties and concepts all over. We're just looking at them in a different way through a different lens. And 3D Bear can help capture that, and Flipgrid can help extend that conversation. So that was kind of what I was thinking there. And there you can see a video of our students kind of doing just that in the classroom is finding different math properties around their classroom. And nothing is more sad than a Flipgrid video with zero comments or zero replies. Um, you can add video comments and, and now you can also add text comments if you enable that in your Flipgrid settings. So to keep that conversation going is definitely where the magic happens. Um, another thing I thought would be pretty fun would be a class collaborative story. So you could so basically the teacher could do have a story prompt or the student could start a story with a scene in 3d bear and from there it's essentially like that chain reaction story we save that scene as a video to the camera roll we put it in flipgrid the next student watches that scene and then adds to the story and then they just keep building on it and building on it and building on it until in the end you have an epic ar story that was created by the class so when we talk about creative communication it's just a fun way to have that creative outlet um, to work on your storytelling skills. And I imagine you could do that, um, you know, K-12 at any different grade level. So um, lastly, you know, I said in the beginning, I was big on digital citizenship. I thought it would be pretty neat to add 3D Bear text objects of any of the ISTE digital citizenship competencies and then create an augmented reality scene that models this in action. Um, students can work in groups to obviously um, make sure that multiple ideas are represented. And then they could add those videos to a Flipgrid. Um, and what I thought, you know, also as a global collaboration is find a partner class, exchange them, get different perspectives, get global perspectives. And then the partner class can reply with Flipgrid videos on the way so that they are inclusive, informed, engaged, balanced, or alert. So just to interrupt, um, I'm so, sorry, but as you're going through this, I'm reminded of a high school class in New York that did something very similar. Similarly, they had the kids pick, go into groups and pick social justice issues. Mm. And then they had to develop videos and augmented reality about those social justice issues. You know, why is it a problem and what should we do about it? And then they shared those in a, you know, and used the, the Flipgrid to basically, um, coordinate all the stories from all the kids. Yeah, I love that, right? Because it's meaningful, uh, they can personalize it, and then they can extend that conversation in Flipgrid, which is which is really powerful. So, and I also thought that that's something that you could even do with parents or family members. We talk about digital citizenship being a community effort, um, you know, there's just another option. So uh, here's to hoping your S app smash lesson sticks the landing, right? Uh, I don't know if it'll go perfect, but it's simple and you just got to kind of get started and most importantly, have fun. These are uh, two tools between 3D Bear and Flipgrid that are a blast. Um, it really does bring out some joy in students and now more than ever, uh, we need that in our classrooms, whether you're in person, hybrid, remote, you name it, um, everyone can appreciate some fun. So uh, thank you. And that was, I wasn't paying attention to time, so I have no idea if I'm short, if I'm over, um, but that was what I had to share related to, to these. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Um, and, uh, I guess we, you know, we, we could go a few, few minutes over if, if people have questions or, or things that they want to see. Um, I think that, uh, I got a, a, a much better feel for, um, how projects can be organized and how, how to, um, give, uh, student vo students their voice and but what what questions do other people have or what comments I know L Linda um, Linda Edwards is here and Linda uses both 3D Bear and Flipgrid do you have any comments Linda um, you can use it with all the age groups of kids I had grade ones doing math using 3D Bear and we uploaded to Flipgrid 
and the grade four or fives were um, reading a book last year, a chapter book, and they were illustrating all the scenes through the book. And we uploaded those to Flipgrid as well. And I, I left my special ed kids, a lot of them were doing story retells and they built the scenes and put the characters in and basically summarized the story. And again, we put them into Flipgrid because that's the easiest way to share them with our community. Yeah, and I see David Lockett is here also, and David is a representative from NASA as, as um, Denise's. So not even necessarily about 3D Bear or Flipgrid. You know, there's just so many so many exciting things coming from NASA. David, do you want to say a few words? Yeah, you know, I was going to say, uh, you know, just listening in, it was just some amazing collaborative tools. I know when I was in the classroom, STEM and computer science, robotics, combining all these tools and providing, you know, uh, different ways to provide student voice is always essential. You know, I know, you know, our students love technology and what better way to integrate that technology than to, you know, have augmented reality, you know, have ways that they can record their voices, you know, so they can, you know, share, so they can, you know, provide new insi insights into learning. So some wonderful, uh, wonderful tools that you all have shared, some, some great ways to apply them. Uh, you know, I know the Mars launch is coming up, so, so some, uh, some great ways. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, and so maybe we'll just leave with one thought from each of you. So might as well go in this in the same order and let uh, put Denise on the hot seat first. Um, so what's one thought that you want to leave with everybody, Denise? Um, just focus on the positive and all the wonderful things that students can are we're doing right now. Um, you know, and try to um, embrace student voice. Um, like I said, the, the rover um, landing is coming up in February. You know, you can use any discipline area and talk about um, the landing. It could be English, social studies, math, language arts. You can use Flipgrid and 3D Bear and integrate them. Um, so definitely, you know, I'm a big advocate for NASA and I love all things space science. So, uh, you know, and just focus on the positive because, you know, there's a lot going on right now and a lot of changes. And I think if we just focus on the positive, I think, uh, that is going to, you know, increase learning and just, you know, push our students forward because we are, you know, learning differently right now, but we are learning. So that's important. So thanks. Thank you for having me. Um, it was an honor to present with Michael as well as Anne this evening. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed being here. I'm very honored. Oh, you were great. And Anne, do you have, uh, what's one thing you'd like to close off with? Mitch, you have no idea how hard it is to limit me to one thing. <laughs> okay, one and a half. Um, well, one would be, I mean, as we're lifelong learners ourselves as, as citizens of the world that we're sharing. So the power of connectedness to further our own professional learning. It's why so many of you showed up on a, it's Tuesday, is it Tuesday or Wednesday? It's Wednesday on a Wednesday night, but friends, don't be afraid. And to it's Thursday in India. Oh, and okay. Well, it's multiple days, right? So don't be afraid to push all the buttons and have fun. Denise just mentioned learning looks different like right now. Teaching looks different right now. Uh, I don't know about you all. It's my first pandemic too, right? So trying new things because the power of community and the power of learning together is just going to open up new possibilities for folks to celebrate the journey and then share the process, right? It looks messy and that's okay, but have fun and work hard. So again, Mitch, thank you, Denise and Michael. Thank you. And to everybody tuning in, um, it's so awesome to see either your name on a screen or your smile on the face. So right. thanks for joining us tonight. Well, thank you, Ann. And Michael. What's your one thing? Yeah, uh, my one thing is that, um, you know, when I look at 3D Bear and I look at Flipgrid, um, they listen to educators and they listen to students. So as you're using these tools and you're thinking of creative ways, you're asking your students for things that they would like to see or what might help them, um, both 3D Bear and Flipgrid are always taking that feedback and then putting it into action. So uh, I guess my takeaway is um, have the conversation with your students and, and then maybe pass that along because you know, you hear the hashtag better together and, um, you know, it's, it, it kind of materializes 
into whether it be new features or whether it be um, a lesson plan or an idea or a share out or something like that. So um, yeah, just share uh, the successes and, um, and, and, you know, in hopes that you'll have more of them. I don't know. That's my, that's my thoughts, I guess. And I guess my thought is that um, everybody, every, pretty much everybody in the world is going through a really different, different and stressful time right now. And I just, I want to thank you for taking time out of your life and giving us an hour. And I hope that you got something out of it. And to remind you all, don't forget to take time for yourself. We're, we're all stressed out these days. We've got a ton of people who are telling us what to do every minute, but please, you know, we need you. So I'd like to just thank everybody for just going through with us on this on this very difficult journey we have over these few years and remember to take time for yourselves and with that i hope to see you at future edge Head interactives as well and uh thank you denise thank you Anne. thank you michael thank you everybody and uh good night everybody or good morning depending on where you are